Hello beautiful people, I am Nikki. This is a night of horror where I talk horror movies and sometimes other genres and TV shows. In this video, I will be talking about the From series season three, episode two. Now, I was a little lackluster in my feelings for From with episode one. I really liked that first episode, but I said with us being three seasons in and no dots having been connected yet we've just had so many little things happen that haven't really tied into anything that i wasn't using my little brain to try to come up with theories like i was like i'm just along for the ride because i was very much feeling like this is going to end like lost we're never going to get answers i'm feeling a little different I'm feeling a little different. I am very excited about the show now because I feel like dots are starting to be connected. Dots will start to be connected. I hope this ain't naivete and that they make me eat my words, but I think we are finally about to go somewhere. Now, at the top of the episode, let me just say, I am very shocked at my feelings for the characters this season. First of all, Donna has always been one of my favorites. Donna irking me this season. Donna irking me. I need her to pull herself together, get her ish together, and tab. I can't stand Tabitha, Julie, Jim. I can't stand the whole damn family, and I'm very annoyed that it's like the central family that I feel like none of them will ever die. It irks my nerves. I want Jim to die. Tabitha is my favorite storyline right now. Like Tabitha is my favorite person to follow at this point. I cannot believe I am even saying that, but let's get right into everything that transpired this episode. Cause it's a lot. I feel like I have a lot to say. I jotted down a lot of notes. I just felt like this episode was really good. And instead of us just seeing things happening, I think stuff is a start to about to start coming together. We already know how last episode ended. Okay. We are here the next morning. Jade and Victor are together in the bar with the animals they were able to save. And Jade gets up and starts to walk out of the door. Victor hesitates. It's like, don't. But Jay feels like somebody has to go see. He goes into the barn. He finds Boy tied up, talking to himself, mumbling to himself, and teaching in the barn. Toe up from the floor. They told this lady up, okay? She did not deserve that. Now, we end up seeing Jade and Boy walking through the streets, um, taking teaching to the church. And... First of all, this episode, I was holding back tears because Boyd running over to T. Chen and holding her and saying, I'm sorry when Jay lets him go. But I was able to hold it together. It, but the tears came, the tears came later. But at this point, I was able to hold it together. But when they're walking through the streets, taking T. Chen to that church, all I could think is what are all these people doing? Just being useless. All the people that were surrounding Boyd as he was walking out of the church, I just, oh, it just irks me. Everything on Boyd's shoulders, I just feel like, what do all the people in town be doing? Like, what do y'all do with your days? Because we are expecting one person to solve everything. We're expecting a few people to be the ones to always go on the missions, go out into the woods, do all the dirty work, do all the heavy lifting, we got so many people in this town. We ain't delegating like we need to. Like, people need to be carrying their weight and holding their weight. Like, I'm sorry. You need to hold your weight. <laughs> Jade, of course, is stunned and wants to know how in the world was Boyd in that barn with those creatures and T. Chin and still alive. And Boyd is just like, they wanted me to watch. They wanted me to watch. And baby... Poor one out for T. Chen. Because we thought we escaped having to really see her death last episode. They say, no, baby. We're going to give it to you this episode. We got a flashback of T. Chen death. And it was horrific. And I will say, when we were watching the flashback of T. Chen death, I had to think for a minute. Because a lot has... It's been three seasons, okay? On this third season, I'll be honest, I don't remember every single solitary little thing. I can remember some, some stuff, okay? My memory good, but I can't remember everything. But I'm like, I could have sworn the creatures eat us. That's why they're after us. But all we saw them do was rip at T. Chen. I'm like, why are they not eating her? 
And a friend of mine was like, yeah, I thought they eat us too, but it seems like they just hollow us out and take our organs. So now I'm feeling like, the fuck is they doing with our organs? If they're not eating us, what are they doing with our organs? And T-Chin was absolutely hollowed out. When we get to the scene, when Kenny go to hug his mama, when she all done up and he put his hand, I'm like, baby, don't put your hand too close around him. You're trying to hug him because it's just all empty in there. I don't want you to have to have to feel that. Like, why do they want to kill us? What are they doing with our organs? because they were literally just ripping at T. Chen and slicing her up. I'm like, why are they not eating her? Child, let's get on to Donna and Boyd because Donna is on my last nerves. So um, she comes in, she's like, is it true? Donna got the nerve to be like, okay, so how many did you save? Was it worth risking all these lives? First of all, Boyd was dumb as hell. It was, it was easily a, a trap, but I feel like Donna, shut the fuck up. Like, how dare you come in here like tossing blame at boy because at this point i feel like what the fuck is donna doing as useless as I, as I feel like everybody else is I'm starting to feel like donna about to be useless for me as well boy is feeling like those animals were all we have and i will say i really really like donna saying no we are all we have and now we have one less i really really loved her saying that because i feel like it ain't hitting home enough for everybody in this town that we are the biggest resource we have because these are the most non-communicating non-information sharing, lazy, lackadaisy people I've ever seen. All of those don't apply to everybody, but it applies to everybody in the town in one way or another. Either they are doing stuff, but not sharing info, not talking, or they're just people in the town that just do nothing, but walk around and stare at boy. But when I tell you, I need Harold to get every award in the world, get a key to the city because he has so many moments in this episode that were so stand out with his acting. Baby, when Donna tried to come at him with the blame, boy, it's like yesterday, you were ready to crawl into a hole and die because the crops were spoiled. Now you telling me I had a choice? And baby, the way Harold was like, get the fuck out of here. And that is felt real. That is felt real. <laughs> I was like, baby, did you ad lib that? Because that felt like real frustration. That felt real black for me. Get the fuck out of here. Like the way he was... <laughs> Give Harold the key to the city, okay? Donna ends up saying, you know what? The game here is rigged. Like you did the on your right, you did the only thing you could do and you lost. You lost a game because it's rigged. And she's like, you know what, Boyd? I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at myself because you told me that one day we would go home and I was stupid enough to believe it. And as much as Donna on my nerves, I got a little more tolerance for her. Everybody on edge and at their breaking point. Donna is cracking up. But I will say, like, I get it. But Donna, what are you doing to get us out of here? Yeah, I won't say she's completely useless because unlike everybody else in the town, she is pulling her weight in, in a way. She doing, you know, everything she can with these crops, making sure, trying to make sure we have food. But I just don't understand the mentality of relying on boy to single-handedly get us out. He ended up here just like all of us. The only thing he can do is figure ish out like all of us. So Donna being like, oh, you said that we would go home one day and I believe, do something so you can go home. I just feel like it's no way in God's name I'm going to be in a situation like this and just sit around waiting for somebody to get me out. We need to all pull our weight, all put our heads together, all share info, and all work towards getting out. Now, we end up seeing Ethan and Julie in the house. Ethan, of course, is upset. Victor comes in and is trying to be like, we need to take t in a blanket. She, you know, baby, Victor's like, she dead. <laughs> People die here. I told you this isn't make-believe. But what I'm interested in is Victor being like, I have to go. Go where? What Victor doing? What is Victor up to? If you've been on my channel, I've been following the show since season one. And my thing that I am a broken record in saying is that Victor has been here the longest. I feel like Victor has information that we don't know. He maybe don't know that needs to be unlocked. And I just do not understand why we do not freaking rack the brain, pick the brain of the person who has been here the longest. So I guess maybe I'm, I'm hopeful that something is about to start connecting and transpiring. So when Victor is just like, 
I got to go. I'm, I'm just like, what has this spark? What is popping off? Where is Victor about to go? We do see Ethan later on at Colony House looking for Victor. Donna hasn't seen him. So I'm very, very interested in where we are going to find Victor at. Jim and Kenny end up finding tons of food growing by the lake where they are out. And it's making me feel like, what do the totems mean? And how can we use them? For one, typically when we are outside trying to hold up in like a tent or that rv van with a totem we can hear the creatures outside talking to us trying to get us to let them in and stuff jim and kenny heard like a twig break but they didn't hear anybody out there like trying to mess with them or anything and also i feel like is it it seems a little too coincidental that we will have all these totems here and the soil isn't ruined like where we are and we got all this fresh food so i'm just kind of like do the totems mean something but Kenny ends up coming into town really excited. Like, y'all, we got food. We got vegetables. We got potatoes. It might even be fish in the water. Like, he feeling like, oh, now we good. Like, that whole we going to starve and they got no food. Yo, we got that now. But, of course, he could tell by how everyone looks. Christy is there. Boyd is there. Something is up. And Jim, the second Jim said, where are my kids? I wanted to smack him in the face. You obviously don't care. Well, you just left me. Who leaves their kids in a place like this? Your kids could have easily been one of the ones or both of them could have been dead with all the stuff that happened last night because Ethan tried to run the hell out there and save, save little Bo Peep. So Jim being like, where are my kids? I just really want to say, if you don't shut your dumb ass up, Jim. But baby, Kenny calling for his mama. Outside that diner, I was about to cry. And we end up having a scene with Christy and... Kenny in the diner and baby the second Kenny said did she suffer I'm just like Kenny don't ask that Kenny Kenny don't ask that because all she did was suffer Kenny Kenny you know where you at don't ask questions like that <laughs> Kenny ends up saying you know when he thinks of his dad he can't not see his dad dead on the floor in that basement he doesn't want to think of his mother that way so he asked christy can you make her look nice and literally the second he said i'm like what kind of sorcery do you think christy got so christy ends up leaving and because she's gonna go you know make his mom look nice for the funeral but kenny is sitting in here baby and why that little music um player comes on playing celebrate good times come on and i'm just like baby this place evil this place evil <laughs> damn this place evil come on now baby. My, my mama dead i'm just like well we know how that radio do this ain't the first time this radio has done something like that we end up having boyd and kenny boyd sees kenny getting all this alcohol filling up these jugs like yo even on a day like today them that's a lot baby kenna say i'm going into the tunnels i'm gonna find every one of them things and i'm gonna burn every last one of them and i like boy it ain't like okay you know let me talk you out he's okay let's go so we end up seeing them standing outside the tunnel and boy it's like this is what they want like they want us angry they want us stumbling in the dark being irrational um, and that's why this place plays on your mental. Like, I feel like it's more than just a goal of, like, killing us. Like, obviously, this place be playing games with folks. Now, Kenny being upset, crying by his mama being alone. And I, we got to remember, Kenny only just got to town. He don't even know how his mama died or what the hell happened. And boy, it's like, she wasn't alone. And I got to tell you, I'm so happy about the way this went down because I said in my video last episode that I was going to be so annoyed if they wrote it where Kenny ended up mad at Boyd or blaming Boyd. We already know how fractured their relationship was with the whole Sarah thing. So I just felt like if we really take 10 steps back and end up blaming Boyd for his mom, I, like that was going to piss me off. But that is not where we went, thank goodness. But Boyd is like, she wasn't alone. They made me watch, but hey, she was strong. She was brave. And he repeats something that she was saying in Cantonese, like he, whatever her last words were. And that's when Kenny really started breaking down. And come to find out his mother's last words were take care of him. 
he'll be alone now. Baby, the way I bought, the way I bought fell out. The episode opens with boy repeatedly speaking like in, in Cantonese because he wanted to remember her last words. And when he says it to Kenny, he's like, I don't even know if I'm, I'm like pronouncing this right, but baby, Kenny got the message. And Boyd and Kenny hug. And I got to say, I'm not against Kenny whole plan. Uh, we need to take all them useless ass townsfolk that don't do nothing. Send they ass down into the tunnel. Everybody need to be helpful. Go down there. Pour, pour the uh, accelerant. Light that bitch up. <laughs> like, do something. Y'all need to start pulling, you pulling your weight. But it just annoyed me when Boyd was walking through the town at the top of the episode. And everybody just, just hovered over there like, y'all niggas don't do nothing. Y'all heard them cows out there. Y'all heard us out there. Y'all ain't come out and do nothing, which not coming out was smart. But still, when Christy goes into the church to get Kenny's mom fixed up, Jade is in there with her. And she ends up asking him for help. She wants to get Kenny's mom fixed up before Kenny sees her. And baby, when Christy is like, I'm not a mortician, that is exactly what I was thinking when Kenny even made the damn request. Like, what kind of magic you expect her to pull off? I would have been like, look, baby. I'm sorry, but it's not to be a closed casket. Like, it ain't nothing, not, it ain't nothing to be done. But Jade and Christy actually do end up getting T-Chan together. I'm not happy with the way they're treating Sarah. Sarah comes to tell Christy earlier in the episode that T-Chan is dead. And just, you're not allowed to come in here. And the attitude they have with Sarah, I absolutely get what Sarah did. But I feel like there should be some type of leeway like a special circumstance leeway this place messes with your mind and it's not like sarah did stuff remember that guy who like slit people throat and stuff sarah did not do anything because she's a psychopath because she's malicious because she wanted to hurt people sarah truly believed that listening to the voices and doing these horrendous things would lead to everybody going home. So I don't know. I feel like that. Now, should Kenny forgive her? No, of course not. That was his dad. But everybody else ain't lose nobody. Even Jim them. She, yeah, she tried to kill Ethan, but he ain't, he ain't killed. <laughs> she killed her brother. Like, I really feel like nobody besides Kenny really has any real stance to be holding this grudge against Sarah to this point. But Sarah comes into the church with this dress and she's like telling them how her and T Chan would, you know, play dress up. And this was her favorite dress. And she said that she would wear it when they all went home. And I about cried when Sarah said that. Just think about T Chan saying she was going to wear that dress when they went home. But they don't have no attitude with Chris at this point. Jay don't really say nothing. But Chris is just like, thank you, Sarah. It would seem as if Sarah would be that stereotypical character to have like a redemption arc, maybe sacrifice herself or Ethan or something or die or whatever. Um, or Kenny. Um, I guess that would be the route of the redemption arc. Sacrifice for Kenny. But I don't think we should go that route. I really don't think we are going to go that route. I think Sarah will be one of the people to make it out alive. Are we already casting our votes on who we think will make it out of the town and make it out alive? I'm going to cast my vote for Sarah. Now, if they want to give somebody a redemption arc, as much as I cannot stand Randall and he can just die, y'all could give him a redemption arc. Like, turn him around, make him likable. But I was very shocked at how good they made T-Chan look. And just at the moment, that is when Boyd and Kenny come into the church to see T-Chan. Circle back to how they be treating Sarah. Julie comes over to Sarah to say thank you for helping them, you know, in the first episode. And Julie goes to say how, you know, what happened to her. She's not okay. Is, is, is Jim even checking, trying to make sure his daughter okay after what happened to her? Like, Jim, Jim oh, I can't stand Jim. I can't stand Jim. But Julie is saying how she's not okay. She thinks this place got into her head, has gotten into her head now. And she doesn't want to hurt anyone. She doesn't want to end up like Sarah. I feel so bad for Sarah. This place is hard enough. Now she is so isolated. Anytime we see Sarah, she's sitting on the steps of a house by herself, just watching everybody walk by. And just speaking on 
Julie in that trance. We still don't even know why Julie and the other two were chosen in that whole trance state. Why breaking the music box woke them. It's just so many dots that haven't connected. But like I said, I got faith that that is where we are about to go. Now, something I found interesting is when Jim gets back to town, Julie has an attitude and she's like, what is wrong with you? Ethan almost died. Like, did you even know that? Why would you leave us? You should have been here. And she's like, I cannot be the fill in parent while you lose it when thomas died of course we know their infant thomas died falling off a changing table or something and julia's like when thomas died you and mom fell apart i was only 15 i cannot do this again at the very end of the episode jim answers the phone the phone rings jim answers the phone and we hear a voice saying dad is thomas now baby of course we know this ain't damn Thomas. Thomas died as a damn infant, okay? That voice sound like a grown adult. Um, but, I, of course, we, I feel like, of course we know this is the, the from place messing with him. And Jim is the right one to mess with because Jim was the dummy. Feeling like he could solve an illogical situation with logical solutions. Who thought he could build a damn AT&T tower and call for help. And was on the phone conversing with somebody who was like, your wife shouldn't be digging. Jim the right one. Jim the right one. What what they finna do with Jim? Please, just, just, I'm just so sick of Jim. I just don't give him no more storylines where he gonna be stupid. Like how he had Randall tying Donna up to the damn tree. We already know this is from something that's about to try and mess with him. We are to the point where we are on the edge. We trying to really break this town. With him getting this phone call, Julie and Ethan go to check on the animals and it's getting really close to being dark. So Jim likely gonna be distracted by being on the phone with his dead child slash adult voice, Thomas, and not even gonna notice that his kids ain't back yet before it gets dark. They're going to check on the animals. So I'm not sure where that's going to lead, but I know Jim is an idiot. So this place, <laughs> Frumville, the place, the entity, whatever it is, is constantly spying on them. I feel like they focus so much on the creatures and nighttime and it's not safe out there at night. But we're not safe ever. We're not safe in the daytime. It was daytime when Boy said, you can't break me. It was daytime with Julie fussing about Thomas. I just feel like, why are we under the delusion that we're ever safe? I don't care if it's daytime. I don't care if we have a talisman up. As long as I am in this place, I would never feel safe. So, of course, Fatima in the bathroom again. That's what we pop up with her at this time. Barely eating, barely sleeping. And now a tooth falls out. And her and Ellis end up going to try and see Christy. But only Marielle is there. Because, of course, Christy is bu busy trying to do what she's doing. They don't want the, um, you know... The one who was abusing substances to kind of help them. But they really have no choice. Marielle ends up saying that pretty much Fatima is malnourished. She's surprised only one two fell out. I just feel like do teeth really fall out if you malnourished? Not, like, it, I don't know. I, it just seemed like, I just, look, look, I'm not a doctor. I, I don't know nothing about this. We end up taking Fatima back home. She tells Ellis to go check on his dad, which I'm going to get into that because I was so annoyed. But Fatima is just about to walk into the house. At first, I watched this episode twice. On my first watch, I thought something was keeping Fatima from going in. But on my second watch, I don't think that's what happened. I think as Fatima is about to walk into the house, the wind blows. And I think she smells the rotting food, but it smells appetizing to her. That distracts her from going into the house. So the smell of food makes her sick, but the smell of rotten food is appetizing. And she ends up chowing down on all this rotten produce. And now I'm just feeling like, well, she bite into a living animal next and then a person like craving rotting food now, craving flesh later. And then it got me thinking, how we know Fatima even pregnant? How do we know what's inside Fatima? What could be possibly happening or transforming her? Crops are suddenly rotten to feed Fatima and aid in her transformation. Now that all the crops rotten, it's the only thing Fatima can eat. I feel like I, this is probably so far fetched, but I'm like, is Fatima turning into a creature 
Well, she because if she turns into a creature and kills Ellis, that's another way to break Boyd. And we know this place wants to break Boyd. But it got me thinking, who are the creatures? Like, who were they? Were they human at some point? And I know the, the fan favorite theory is don't trust Tilly, which I ain't trust that old bitty either. <laughs> but I feel like that's too easy. Like, because I feel like Tilly kind of feels like, you know how you have a red heron in a movie and it just feels so obvious that the movie is trying to tell you this is the person that you just know it ain't? That's how I feel about Tilly. Like, she's so off and so weird. I'm just like, that'll be too obvious. But I just feel like maybe Tilly was a creature and now she's human. Like, could that explain why she was dancing in the rain and it's general in, in general just weird? Let's cut to my favorite storyline um, so far this season is Tabitha. Tabitha ended up passing out on the porch. She wakes up. Victor's dad has a gun, wants to know how she got his son lunchbox. And she was kind of annoying me. My family was taking a road trip and then there was a down tree. Bitch, I don't care about that. Why you got my son? Like, girl, if you don't stop trying to spin the block and go around the corner to get across the street, this man don't want to know about his son but he doesn't really believe anything Tabitha is saying so she has him look up the missing people that are and families that are in the town so he can see these people are missing and he still doesn't believe her he calls the cops and it's not until Tabitha starts saying I thought if I saved the kids from the tower and I, I the second she said that you can notice like the dad recognizes that and she's trying to tell him Victor is a good man. He saved my daughter's life. My son loves him. And she's like, I thought if I saved the children in the tower. And the dad is like, wait, what you say? And the cops end up knocking. And the way Tabitha got some trust. Because I wouldn't have been hunched in the back hoping he, you know, don't wrap me out to the car. I probably would have ran out the back though. I would have been too scared. But he ends up believing her after hearing that. Before Victor's mom disappeared, she started hearing voices that children, um, she said children were locked in a tower. They were crying out to her. And he goes to tell her he literally has never repeated that to anyone except the lead detective who died 20 years ago. And going through everything where I don't know how you doing this with the internet and these missing families, how you know the information you know, the only explanation is you're telling the truth and my son is alive. And he goes to tell her, I think you're here for what's in the basement. And I am kind of thinking, did Victor's mom try to go to from, try to find from the from town? But then I'm like, I don't think you would do that with your kids in the car. <laughs> So apparently the parents were hippies. They got clean after having kids. But then one night the mom wanted to go down memory lane. She, they dropped acid. And that's when the voices started. And she started seeing things. And she said it was a place that was everywhere. But you can't find it. And we see these paintings that she drew of everything she had dreams of before ever coming to the from town. And this is why I say this ending segment is why I feel like I have hope that we are finally about to connect dots. For one, I felt like all the stuff that I say has transpired and it felt like things were just happening, but nothing really meant anything or connected. For one, Elgin having the dreams about from before every coming here. I'm just like, so that just ain't gonna go nowhere? That just don't mean nothing? Like, how was he dreaming about this place? Why was he dreaming about this place before he got here? Well, now we know. Victor's mom had the same exact experience. So I'm hoping, like I said, things are about to tie in together. Dots are about to connect on the paintings. One thing that I harped on about dots not connecting was, I think it was season one or two. I can't remember exactly, but Jade having them visions out by that tree and, and seeing the Civil War people. When we look at the paintings, we see the Civil War people that Jay saw. We see the lighthouse. We see the diner. We see the dead Akui kids. So that's why I'm like, okay, pray, pray, praise Jesus. Our dots are about to connect. Are we about to get answers? <laughs> and I love, love, love how they did the end of this episode. We have Victor's dad voiceover during Kenny's mom's funeral talking about how Victor's mom said she was chosen. She said it was a place that was everywhere, but a place you can't find somewhere you could stumble into from anywhere. And of course we know everybody who got here was traveling in completely different places. Remember we had that big map with the pins of where everyone was traveling from. 
Um, you could stumble in from anywhere, but never find a way to leave. His wife said that there were people there who were lost and afraid, who found themselves living inside a nightmare, that they couldn't escape. They were fighting a battle. They couldn't win. Remember Donna said, the game is rigged, and how they were holding on to hope, and when hope was gone, they would hold on to each other. And certain people who end up in this town are chosen to free the children. No one has been successful. And we're coming to the solution that, okay, is Tabitha now chosen? But now I'm also feeling like it's Elgin chosen because why was Elgin having dreams before getting here in the same way that Victor's mom was having dreams before getting here? So those paintings, and I'm just like, please tell me stuff we're about to connect. But at the end of the episode, we have Boyd and Ellis. And Ellis is like, how are you holding up? Boyd is like, not good. And I'm really annoyed. Why are they still so disconnected? We already know what happened because, of course, when the series started, we didn't know why they were so estranged. But then we know we found out what happened with Boyd's wife slash Ellis' mom. But why are they so disconnected? Why does Fatima have to tell him to check on his dad? Ellis is one of the useless people. But Boyd is pretty much like, we can't keep doing this. We can't keep waiting around. We need information. And he wants Ellis to help him capture a creature. Please give Harold and Ricky all the awards, okay? The two that play Boyd and Kenny, because I was I had to pause the episode. I, I cried both, both watches of the episode. And I'm still curious how time works in Fromville versus the real world, because Victor looks way older than his dad. Um, also I, when I, I'm got my hopeful things go connect, but Victor was measuring the trees saying they moved seasons have changed. We got snow and remember seasons didn't change in Fromville. I'm hoping all of this stuff will start connecting. And I feel like we're in a space where Kenny losing both parents. I feel like Ellis is about to lose Tabitha. Maybe Boyd is about to lose Ellis. This place doesn't just want to kill them. I think some real devastation is coming. And I also feel like I've liked Jay's character since he was introduced, but I need them to do more with his character. Like I need them to do something with Jade. Thank you so much for being here for this recap of the episode. Let me know in the comments, how you feeling about From? What are your theories? Do you think Dots are about to finally connect? If you like this video, please, um, like the video, <laughs> hit like on the video, comment down below, let me know you're here. Please make sure you are subscribed and have your bell notifications on. I will see you in the next one, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.